Cal Poly students celebrated to show support for a certain country. Space where you can create your own art and escape from school stress. And we'll see what it takes to be a part of the Cal Poly logging team. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, Here, this is Mustang News. Welcome to Mustang News, I'm Peter Gonzalez. And I'm Dylan Ring. A truck containing controversial cargo crashed into the Highland overpass this week. Uh, the truck was carrying marijuana and it collided with the train overpass on Highland by the Materials Engineering Building. The police have not released whether or not the truck was carrying medical marijuana. The driver, James Mendaros from San Jose, was not hurt and was not arrested by the police, but is currently involved in an ongoing investigation about the incident. The impact tore off the roof of the truck, but left its contents intact. The truck was later found in Arroyo Grande and was impounded. This week holds Israel Independence Day, and Cal Poly students are showing their spirit from across the world. Students gathered on Dexter Lawn on Wednesday at an Israel Independence Day fair, where they participated in a variety of activities. From spray paint art, to inflatable jump house games, to cultural dances, students celebrated the country's independence, which has been in effect since 1948. Students also had the option to learn about the country's history at an information booth open until 1 p.m. A new undergraduate and technology research center is coming to campus after a generous donation by the Frost family. A $20 million donation by Cal Poly alumni William L. Frost and wife Linda was donated in support of a new science and agriculture teaching and research complex. The 64,000 square foot complex will be located on the lawn between the Baker Center for Science and Math and the English Building. The College of Liberal Arts, the College of Agriculture, and the College of Science and Math will all be sharing the space. Cal Poly now has $35 million of the estimated $57 million that it will take to finish the complex. Construction is set to begin in 2018. Cal Poly's logging team is in second place for the region after competing in Montana in the Association of Western Forestry Clubs Conclave. We visited the logging unit to see how the class teaches not only traditional forestry skills, but also teamwork. I'm here at Cal Poly's logging unit where students in Natural Resources 290 get a chance to do some logging activities like axe throwing. So we practice traditional forestry skills based on traditional logging practices, sawing, using a crosscut saw, chopping, then there's chainsaw events like cutting with a chainsaw, there's tree climbing, you use spurs and uh, a rope to get up the pole as fast as you can. Burling or log rolling. Put a log in the ro in the water, and you got a two people on a log. You got to stay on longer than the other person. We compete in these events against other schools. When the loggers saw, they start with a first bottom cut. They stop at the red mark, and then they end with a top cut, where they try and meet in the red mark in the same spot. And the goal is to make sure that this wall right here doesn't exist, that there's no difference between the two cuts so that it's a clean cut. This is an example of a bad cut, while this is an example of a good cut. I love it. Being a girl on the logging team is really fun because you get to participate in a lot of events. I think when there's more guys, it's hard to, um, you have to kind of find your niche a little bit and pick an event and get really good at it. Um, for girls, because there's less of us, you can really try anything. And I also like the saw. Um, Thong's really good, good workout too. Students of all majors can check out the team and those interested can register for Natural Resources 290 in the fall. Tell me Dylan, how many times did it actually take before you could hit the bullseye? Well, I'll be honest Peter, first try. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there's a unique place on campus where you can go to relieve a little bit of school stress and create your own art. Laura Hoover is live at the Craft Center and she's getting a taste of what they have to offer. Laura, what are you making at the moment? Well, Peter, I really don't think you're going to want what I'm making, but you should definitely check out what these students are making. Here in the Craft Center, you can make your own surfboard, design your own pottery, and even make the designs of jewelry that you made yourself, like this. Earlier this week, I spoke with a few students who have fallen in love with the Craft Center as a place that has changed their Cal Poly experience. Cal 
Cal Poly's Craft Center is a place where students come to relieve stress, socialize, and use their creativity to make unique art. Any student or community member can sign up for a class or just drop in to work on a project in any of the seven studios offered. Electrical engineering senior Edgar Palacios teaches skateboard deck construction and uses the Craft Center to relieve stress. Well, the Craft Center is a great way for the community members and students to get involved. As you can see, we have seven different studios. We have surfboard, bike room, jewelry, behind me is the woodworking area, ceramics, stained glass, and flame working. And with every single class, you get supplies, instruction, and all the materials that you need. Biology sophomore Anna Talkin became a surfboard shaping instructor after taking the class her freshman year. She says it's even more special to be a help to others. It's a great feeling. Like, I mean, making boards for yourself is awesome, but being able to help people make their own boards and just watch how excited they get about it and, you know, I don't know, helping them through the process is such a rewarding feeling, so I love it. The Craft Center is sponsored by ASI and is located on the first floor of the University Union. The center holds a craft sale twice a year in the UU Plaza, so the student and community artists can display and profit from their artwork. Anyone can have access to the Craft Center, no matter what skill level you are or how much experience you have. I mean, they let me come in here. Um, the Craft Center is open Monday through Friday for classes and open all week for walk-ins. I'm Laura Hoover reporting live from the Craft Center, Mustang News. Thank you, Laura. To learn more about the Craft Center and what opportunities are available, visit the ASI website at www.asi.calpoly.edu and go under the University Union tab. Coming up after the break, a popular San Luis Obispo shop reopened after vi finishing renovations this past weekend. And this year's Greek Week was a success. We'll let you know just how much money Greek Life raised to help children with cancer. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. ASI is hosting Cal Poly's fifth annual Mustang Mile tonight on Cal Poly's campus. The event starts at 6.30 p.m. in the UU Main Lobby, the Campus 5K Walk or Run will be followed by a festival featuring games and live music at the Rec Center. Participants are encouraged to dress up to show their Cal Poly pride. Greek Week 2016 was a success raising both money for charity and food for a local food bank. Overall, the Penny Wars Charity Drive raised $4,250. The money was given to Jack's Helping Hand, a charity that helps sick children's families who have financial troubles get what they need. The canned food drive collected almost 4,000 cans that were donated to the Slow Food Bank. The winning team of Greek Week was Team Leo. The KCPR Pledge Drive starts this week. Harrison Riley found out how the event has evolved over the years. 
Running a college radio station such as KCPR at Cal Poly can be a grueling task that takes time, effort, and willing student volunteers to work undesirable hours. While KCPR gets half of its funding from an IRA grant, the other half is through a student-ran pledge drive. With the pledge drive's money, we are able to purchase new equipment for the station that keeps us on air and keep, gives us the ability to continue to deliver the programming that people enjoy. Even with impressive equipment inside the studio, a radio station still needs constant improvement. I have one of the most technically advanced stations in all of Salt County, but it's starting to get a bit older. So a lot of the really cool technology we have is starting to have some of its circuits get a little bit older, and right now we really want to start to replace it before it breaks so that we can continue to be on air. With the future of the station up in the air as of a few years ago, the KCPR staff stepped up its game to promote the pledge drive. We made it very clear that we, we needed people's help, and we, uh, we made it clear that that we wanted people to donate, whereas in, in years past, I think it was it was more loose, it wasn't promoted as heavily, there weren't as many events. Uh, to receive donations, KCPR is hosting a variety of events and giving away big ticket items. Giving away a ton of stuff, we have Outside Lands tickets, we have tickets to go do paintball. A bike? Uh, yeah, we have a bike. Harrison Riley, Mustang News. The first pledge drive event will be KCPR's open mic night tonight at 8 in the Performing Arts Center. The popular donut shop Slow Doco finished reservations on Friday. The store expanded into the shop next door, which has been empty since the end of last year. The extra room includes area for a stage that was used on Friday for the 12-hour live music festival. Event coordinator and media manager Aaron Parsons said it was all hands on deck to finish everything in time. The past 24 hours for me, I've been pretty much here working on different things. Um, putting together our space was the thing we were working on all yesterday. Uh, sweeping, cleaning everything up, putting all of our games out. We got a bunch of new board games to play, so putting all of our new stuff out. Um, and then tonight, or last night, was making donuts, and it was truly like up until 10 o'clock this morning. To celebrate the expansion, Slodoko hosted live music from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Lala Padoko started off with guitarist Marcus DiMaggio, who sang covers of Bill Withers and Stevie Wonder, among others. The event finished up at 11 p.m. with The Only Ocean. The donut shop also unveiled its new line of vegan donuts. For more information, visit slodoko.com. My name is Harrison Riley, and I'll have your Mustang Weather Report after the break. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. We're here. Yay. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dinner is cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. With the primary season almost over and the November election ahead, we decided to break down two of the most confusing aspects of American politics 
the Electoral College, and the contested convention. During election season, you'll often hear the term Electoral College said a lot. But what exactly is the Electoral College? The process dates back to our founding fathers and the Constitution. The total number of electors is 538, which is equal to the number of representatives in Congress. Number 538 is equal to the total number of representatives in Congress. Of those numbers, 400 are representatives, 100 are senators, and three are electors for the District of Columbia. Even if a candidate receives 50% or more of the popular vote, that does not guarantee them the White House. In order to secure the White House, both the Democrats and the Republicans are fighting to get 270 votes, or more than half of the 538 votes possible in the Electoral College. Both parties tend to focus on states like California, Florida, and Texas because of the big number of electoral votes that each state has. Some states are historically Republican or Democrat. However, there are some states that are known as swing states, like Ohio. It's in states like those that you will see candidates campaign more aggressively. We'll have to stay tuned till November to see which candidate is the first to reach 270. You've probably heard this before in the media. Contested convention, the contested national convention at the contested convention, the contested convention. But what exactly is a contested convention? In the Republican Party, delegates are accumulated by candidates according to the rules of the party. Usually, delegates are bound to their candidate during the first ballot, but after that, things can fall apart pretty quickly. But a contested convention would happen nevertheless if no candidate reaches the 1237 delegates. Now, in order for each candidate to win and secure the nomination for the Republican Party, Donald Trump would have to win more than 200 of the remaining delegates. Ted Cruz would have to win 90% of the remaining delegates, and John Kasich is mathematically disqualified from winning the nomination. A contested convention hasn't happened since 1976, when Gerald Ford came into the National Convention without the number of delegates necessary. If there is no clear winner after the first ballot, then there will be a second one and a third one and so on until there is a clear winner. That is when floor fights can happen and it'll take a superhero to break it all up. I'm Daniel Park reporting for Mustang News. We'd like to thank Daniel Park for his contributions to the making of these political packages. Harrison? I'm Harrison Riley and here's your Mustang News weather report. We have the warmest temperatures in the North County um, with a high of 85 in Paso and 77 in Creston with 78 in Tassadero and Santa, Mar Santa Margarita. Over the gray, there's a cooling trend with the high of 74 in San Luis Obispo in the South County. In the South County, we have a high of 70 in Arroyo Grande and a high of 60 in Napomo. It's a little warmer in Santa Maria, as you can see, um, with, a, with the rest of the South County going down with a high of 71. Rounding out the southern end um, is the Orca with a high of 69. And we have our lowest temperatures in Vanderburg with a low of 64. For the beaches, the lowest temps are in Morrow Bay with a low of 66 and a 71 in Avila with 72 in Pismo and 69 Oceano. Looking at the extended forecast, it will be in the low 70s across the board throughout the weekend with foggy mornings, which will clear up by the afternoon. In the evenings, we will see cloud cover return to the county with chilly temperatures in the low 50s. I'm Harrison Riley, and that was your Mustang News Weather Report. Dylan, Peter, back to you. Coming up after the break, the Cal Poly track team is preparing for another big weekend. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. They're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. Lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. What's going on guys, David Klein here and this is your Cal Poly Sports Update. A little team from Leicester United Kingdom overcame ridiculous odds to capture one of the greatest accomplishments in world football. I have more on what some say is the greatest Cinderella story in sports history. At the beginning of the 2015 Premier League campaign, Leicester City were listed at 5,000 to 1 odds to win the Premier League. To put those odds in perspective, the odds were 2,000 to 1 for Kim Kardashian to become the President of the United States. Or, for those same odds, you could bet that Elvis is actually still alive. Thanks to the three frontmen of Jamie Vardy, Rudy Adamares, and N'Golo Kante, the Foxes were able to beat those 5,000 to 1 odds to win one of the greatest trophies in world football. Jeremy Brooks says it's a great way to bring in new fans to the game. I'm really excited. I think it'll get a lot more people excited about soccer and involved in it. It's a chance for the little teams to have hope because Big team always in the Premier League, but 5,001 odds, they did it. Best story of all time in sports, I think so. It's like a Cinderella story, it's awesome. Meanwhile, Tanner Melody thinks it's just a great sports story. I think it's pretty amazing going from the bottom of the table, almost uh, knocked out last year, to now top of the table after only five teams have dominated the last 20 years. And with Jamie Vardy, he's like in his mid-20s now, and he uh, came from nothing, really. I mean, like, he was an all right player last year, now MVP. So it's pretty amazing to see them do this, especially with the budget they have compared to all the big teams like Liverpool, Manchester United, Man U. David Klein, Mustang News. Winning the Premier League was the first top flight trophy for Leicester City in their 132 year club history. After a successful first round of Big West Championships, the Mustangs have high hope for what's to come. Amelia Pereira has a story. Ready, set. This is nothing but a routine for the Cal Poly track team. After months of training and preparation, the team is now in Big West Championship play and will compete for a second consecutive weekend in Long Beach. Senior Devin Bennett, who ranks fifth in Cal Poly track history, helped the Mustangs win a combined six of ten events. Bennett says how he feels about the wins and that he and his team are hoping for more. I've really just kind of been bettering my score every year, a little bit, every time, so. Uh, it wasn't a huge surprise, but I'm pretty stoked about it, though. The Mustangs won third place in the Big West for both men's and women's divisions in 2015, and senior Kendall Nielsen hopes this year will be just as good or better than the last. We have a few key players missing this year, but I think that just puts um, more positive pressure on everyone else to really rise and perform to the next level. Nielsen believes that no matter what the team rankings were during the regular season, anything can happen in the championships. It all needs to be set aside as we just focus on what we've been training for all season and competing to the best of our ability and really just fighting for everything we can and really encouraging each other. Bennett will compete in Javelin this weekend and says that he tries not to let his nerves influence his performance. So yeah, it's really about you know focusing on yourself, um, just being relaxed as you can. Uh, using the crowd to get you kind of pumped up sometimes. And if the Mustangs achieve a top spot in the Big West Championships, they will get a chance to compete in the regional championships that will take place in two weeks at the University of Kansas. Amelia Pereira, Mustang News. The Big West Championships can be viewed live on Prime Ticket between 2 and 6 p.m. this Saturday. With only 10 games left in the season, Cal Poly Baseball is making the push for the NCAA tournament. After dropping four straight this past week, the Mustangs will look to pick up the pace versus UC Irvine starting Friday before hitting the road against on Tuesday versus CSU Bakersfield. With such a young team in place, the Mustangs and head coach Larry Lee have a record of 26-21, and 21, but they will still need to make a strong push at the end of the season if the Mustangs can, uh, want to clinch a berth in the NCAA tournament. And also tune into MustangNews.net Friday, May 13th at 6 p.m. for a live stream of the Cal Poly baseball game against UC Irvine. 
Guys, that's all I got from Sports Action this week. Dylan, Peter, back to you guys on the desk. Thank you, David. Coming up after the break, why the new opening of this new pizza place is perfect for Cal Poly students. Emergency plan today. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama, get your diploma. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. This is why you took a second job. Why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. Why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. That's the one. I will not be news today. I will not make another push to be the first man in space with frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And I will not go viral when my terror is caught on camera when I finally realize that in the vacuum of space, no one can hear you sing. I'm Lance Bass, and I will not be trending today because there is a much bigger story that needs to be heard. Blaze Pizza opened last week in University Square off Foothill Boulevard. Kara Benson has more on the affordable meal that's catered to college students. We want to get as close to the campus as possible because we love Cal Poly, we love the students and just a great atmosphere and the energy they bring. Um, I think it's super convenient and it's, um, it's like a personal pizza, you can get it whenever you want. Oh, <laughs> so good! You have the option to build your own so you can actually have your dough presser in front of you and follow your pizza down the assembly line and build it per the ingredients that you want on your pizza rather than some pizza places where you um, the toppings are predetermined or you can only get so many or you gotta pay more or you, you, you maybe don't want something you don't have an option to leave that off here you can do whatever you want and build whatever you want yeah we have a lot of guests who come in and go wow all you can eat for $7.95 um, they're like I would have thought I had to pay more for that it's very like easy to do like my friends are some are gluten free or lactose intolerant and it's super easy for you to go to and I don't know everyone is kind of cool seeing how everyone has their own little pizza flavors and what they want to eat basically because it's great for college students because <laughs> it's cheap and you can create your own and how did you like it was it good so good I'm for sure finishing the whole thing <laughs> it's really good we're here in San Luis and we're here to stay and probably a second location coming maybe in a year or so so Blaze Pizza is open until 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and then 1 a.m. on the weekends. Thanks for joining us today for this edition of Mustang News. I'm Peter Gonzalez. And I'm Dylan Ring. Visit mustangnews.net for continuous news updates.